Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello viewers, welcome to this next lecture on the NPTEL MOOC course on Mathematical Portfolio Theory. You would recall that we had spent the last few lectures discussing on the non-mean variance framework and in today's class we start off on a new broader topic namely uh, optimal portfolio and consumption and in this we will talk about uh, both uh, the optimal portfolio as well as consumption in the setup, setup for discrete time models as well as continuous time models and this is the point we will go back and refer to uh, one of our earlier lectures when we have talked about the binomial model and we have talked about the geometric Brownian motion model. So uh, let us begin this lecture and the first topic that you will do is, uh, so this broader topic is optimal portfolio and consumption. So, we begin with the first topic uh, that is portfolio and wealth process and as I said that we will discuss this in the discrete and continuous time framework. So, we will start off with discrete models. So, let us uh, consider a market model with n risky securities or uh, stocks which are designated by capital S1, capital S2 all the way to capital S of uh, n and the market has a bond B. Uh, further, let the value of the positions at time t be denoted by x of uh, so, this means I will have things like S1 of T, S2 of T uh, all the way to S of capital N T and B T. Further, uh, the assumption is that the initial wealth level or amount B x0 is equal to some small x. So, what I mean is basically now uh, to be more explicit here x of t will denote the wealth level at time t when you have started off at a initial time t equal to 0 with a wealth level of x and in a synonymous manner we will uh, use s1, s2 of t all the way of sn of t, bt to denote the price of the stocks and the bond at time t. So, let us now get focused on what is going to be my wealth process x of t sub, uh, subject to us having started off with the initial amount to be invested as being some little x and uh, this initial amount is invested in the a capital L number of stocks and bond. So, we now consider uh, the problem in the single period framework that is trading happens at say time t equal to 0 and t is equal to 1. 
Now, let delta i denote the number of units of stock S i at time t equal to 0. So, that means at time t equal to 0, you purchase delta i number of the stock S i and this is held till, so I should say that this is purchased at a time t equal to 0 and held till time t equal to 1. And uh, let delta naught denote the number of units of bond B purchased at time t equal to 0 and held till time t is equal to 1. So, the assumption is that that there are no transaction costs. All right. So, now once we have this set up, uh, what you can do is that we now can introduce what is known as the self financing condition. So, accordingly the self financing condition is given by x 0 is equal to delta naught b 0 plus delta 1 s 1 0 all the way to delta n s n 0. And the wealth at the end of the period is given by x of 1 is equal to delta naught b 1 plus delta 1 s 1 of 1 all the way to delta n s n of 1. Uh, so, what do you have here? So, basically we start off at time t equal to 0, uh, we start off with the wealth level x 0 equal to x and this at time t equal to 1 has the value of x of 1 given by this relation. So, how do you get x 0? So, remember that you, uh, the, you have invested in delta naught number of bonds at time 0 and you have invested in delta i number of uh, stocks S i at time 0. So, that means that this expression here, this is going to be the total investment that you have at time t equal to 0 and this must exactly match the amount of money that you have in hand namely x of 0. Now, remember that this delta naught, delta 1 all the way to delta n, these are positions that you get into at time t equal to 0 and hold on to until time t equal to 1. So, accordingly the wealth at the end of the period is given by, so delta naught into the price of the bond at time 1 which is B 1 and then all these delta i's uh, with the price of the stock S i being S i of 1. So, you add this up and this will give you the value of your investment or the value of the portfolio at time t equal to 1. Okay. So, this is called the self financing condition because that uh, you can only invest the total investment must exactly match. Uh, the amount that is available in hand. So, that means that the whole investment of delta naught delta 1 to delta n must be completely self financed by the money that is hand without any external support. Okay. So, now uh, what we introduce is uh, we introduce the notation of this uh, to club together delta naught delta 1 all the way to delta n and we call this vector delta. So, this is the vector of positions delta as given here, this is called the trading strategy.
So, what we do now is we now introduce the notion of consumption as an individual economic preference. Uh, so, accordingly, as a result of the introduction of the uh, concept of consumption, we revisit the wealth equations to account or incorporate the consumption. That is, uh, consumption means spending money outside the market under consideration. So, remember what is the market under consideration? The market under consideration was the bond S1 all the way to Sn and consumption means that so, if you are uh, in the market under consideration, that means that your investment will be in the bond or one of the bond or uh, S1 or S2 all the way to Sn or a combination of that. So, consumption is basically spending money uh, not on any of these what you call securities uh, that is the bond and capital and number of stocks, but spending the money somewhere outside the market for the purpose of your individual consumption. So, here this basically means that the amount that is consumed is no longer in circulation in the market under consideration. All right. Uh, so, let uh, then uh, we introduce a notation. So, let C0 denote the amount uh, consumed at time t is equal to 0. And uh, another notation we introduce is let x of 1 denote the wealth prior to consumption at time t is equal to 1. Now, uh, let us now re-examine the self-financing condition after consumption. So, accordingly the self financing condition becomes, so earlier what we had? We had delta naught B0 plus delta 1 of S1 of 0 all the way to delta N Sn of 0 and earlier this was equal to X of 0 is the wealth that is available at time 0. However, now that you have made a consumption of C0, that means this amount of money has gone outside the market. So, the remaining amount that you have is the one which you can invest in the market and then X0 minus C0 must be equal to the amount invested in the market after the consumption C0 has happened. And also the wealth prior to consumption as indicated in the uh, preceding line uh, of the previous page. So, the wealth prior to consumption at time t equal to 1 is given by as before x 1 is equal to delta naught b 1 plus delta 1 s 1 of 1 all the way to delta n Sn of 1. So, thus uh, in general the wealth process before consumption at time t is given by x of t is going to be equal to uh, delta naught of t into b t 
plus summation delta i t into s i of t i is equal to 1 to n. So, we now enumerate the conditions that need to be applied on the portfolio process capital X of T and the consumption process. So, remember the consumption is also a process you can consume at uh, the time uh, generic time T and uh, these conditions are uh, driven by both mathematical and economic considerations. So, let us uh, enumerate these conditions. So, the strategy and by strategy I mean here uh, C as well as the uh, vector delta of the investment, this is admissible or that is allowed if, so this is something like opportunity set that we have done, if C of t is a non-negative adapted process. And uh, let me explain what adapted process is. So, uh, this means that in other words, C of t is uh, dependent on the information available at time small t. Secondly, bankruptcy is not allowed which mathematically translates to the following that the wealth at time capital T must be greater than or equal to C of capital T. So, that means your consumption at time capital T cannot exceed your wealth level at time capital T. And thirdly, the self financing condition is given by the following. So, uh, let us look at time t. At time t, you, you have a wealth level x of t and then you have consumed c of t and the remaining amount you invest in bonds, uh, delta naught bond, uh, delta 1 in, in the first stock all the way to delta of n, s n of t and this delta naught will have the argument t plus 1 to indicate uh, that this is an investment made at time t and held up to time t plus 1. So, likewise delta 1 t plus 1 all the way to delta n t plus 1. Okay. Okay, so, what we had actually here is, is that this delta naught of t, this is basically the investment made at time t minus 1 and this is the investment made at time t minus 1 and uh, this is the number of units that you hold at time t till time small t and then the value becomes delta naught of t into b t and summation of delta i of t s i of t and this ends up being the value of your holdings at time t given by x of t. So, please understand that this is the investment made at time t minus 1 held until time t. So, likewise here uh, this one is the investment that is made at time t and likewise this values, but held until time t plus 1. So, for delta x the argument will indicate the time point till which the investment is actually being held. 
Okay, so now uh, what we do is that we now elaborate on consumption choices uh, so accordingly let x denote a consumption choice and x could be basically a different alternative investment that you have or a different consumption alternatives that you have now if the consumption choice x1 results in so this x should not be confused with the self financing condition uh, so this should be this is synonymous with c so this results in more money being generated then the consumption choice x2 uh, under all uh, states or circumstances then we say that x1 dominates x2 and we denote this by x1 being greater than or equal to x2. So, this is the notation, it is not literally greater than, but this is the notation. Now, unfortunately, uh, the reality is slightly different as we had seen in case when you were discussing uh, SSD, FSD and uh, TSD uh, in the previous class. Uh, so, in reality, what happens is that in some states, so this is similar to when we looked at the cumulative distribution of one being greater than other in some range of r and the cumulative distribution of uh, the one being less than the other in some other range of the returns. So a similar kind of argument will now result in the following statement that in reality in some states or uh, circumstances one choice will result in more money and in other state or circumstance the same choice will result in less money. So, obviously, this brings us to the question of how we can make a consumption choice. So, the next thing we will look at is comparing consumption choices uh, so the first uh, topic is the uh, the first sort of axiom or uh, uh, comparative criteria is the following that if the investor likes the consumption choice x1 as at least as much as x2 this is denoted by this notation secondly if the investor always likes x1 choice x1 to x2 it is denoted by uh, this notation and thirdly when the investor likes choice x1 as much as x2 and x2 as much as x1 the investor is indifferent 
between the two choices x1 and x2 and this is denoted by x1 similar to x2. So, uh, this brings me to the properties of preference relation and we will enumerate four properties. So, uh, the first property is completeness or some sort of exhaustiveness uh, and this is stated as given any two strategies x1 and x2, we have either, so there are only three possibilities that x1 is at least preferred to x2 or x2 is preferred to x1 at least or possibly both. Next uh, is transitivity. So, if the consumption or under x1 is preferred over x2 or at least you know preferred as much as x2 and x2 is uh, at least preferred as x3, then this preference will hold uh, for x1 uh, over x3. Thirdly, this is monotonicity. So, if x1 is preferred over x2 if in numerical terms, then the consumption x1 is preferred over x2. And finally, we have the condition of convexity. Uh, so, in this case what we do is that we start off with two uh, consumption x1 and x2 and we consider the consumption choice x3 and that is given by some linear combination alpha x1 plus 1 minus alpha x2. Of course, alpha strictly lies in the open interval 0, 1. Then we have x3 is preferred over x whenever we have x1 is preferred over x and x2 is preferred over x. Let us now consider an example of uh, comparing consumption choices and you look at two scenarios. So, scenario 1 is uh, enumerated as follows and in scenario 1 the investor has to choose between two projects. The first project is that, so project A pays either 10 or 100 and there is a project B pays 15 when A pays 10 or it pays 110 when A pays 100. So, there are, so, under the circumstance that A pays 10, then B will pay 15 which is a higher amount and in the circumstance when A pays 100, then B will pay 100. So, in both the cases, B, both the scenarios, B will pay more. So, uh, thus the obvious choice is to invest in project B. Alright, uh, so let us look at another scenario uh, slightly different. 
where you are caught in a dilemma. So, here again project A pays as before here it pays either 10 or 100, but project B pays 110 when A pays 10. So, that means it pays more and it pays 15 when A pays 100. So, in this case B pays much less. So, under one circumstance B will pay more, in another circumstance B will pay less. So, accordingly in this case it is not clear whether uh, A or B should be the choice. So, this brings us to revisiting utility functions uh, in the context of consumption. So, recall that uh, the utility function maps the consumption choices to real numbers. Remember we had introduced the term called utils and uh, that is it assigns a real number to every choice of consumption which helps in determining preferences between different choices. So, accordingly if u of x 1 that means, the util of x 1 is greater than or equal to that of x 2, this will imply that x 1 is preferred at least as much as x 2. If u of 1 is strictly greater than u of x 2, then it implies that x 1 obviously is preferred over x 2 and if u of x 1 is equal to u of x 2, this means that there is there investor is indifferent to the two choices x 1 and x 2. All right. Uh, so, when we talked about utility functions, we had uh, sort of assumed that uh, you know we have a wide range of choices of utility functions. We talked about log utility, uh, quadratic utility and so on and we had used this in uh, several contexts. So, what you are going to do now is going to look at a very simple example uh, to identify how to figure out what is going to be the utility function for a each, uh, each individual investor. Now, this is actually a non-trivial exercise, but we will just give an illustration of a very simple way uh, of doing in a, in a very particular case uh, as mostly as an illustrative example. Uh, of course, you know in reality it is going to be very difficult to extend uh, such kind of uh, situations in general. Uh, when you are looking at a person specific utility function at which point you have to mostly rely on uh, whether the person uh, is risk averse, news neutral or risk loving and accordingly you can make a choice of utility functions. But what you are going to do now is look at a very uh, specific example of how one can determine the utility functions based on uh, very specific inputs from the investor in terms of their preferences. So, accordingly we look at uh, this example on determining the utility. 
So, what happens here is to investment opportunities are offered to an investor. So, what is the first opportunity? In the first opportunity, at the investment pays an amount of 10,000 with certainty and in the second opportunity, it pays. So, the second opportunity, the first one is a deterministic quantity and it pays a certain amount. So, this is like a bond and the second opportunity is going to pay out random variables. So, it pays out uh, three possible values 22,500 with probability 0 0.3, 4,900 with probability 0 0.3 and an amount of 900 with probability 0 0.4. So, in order to establish her or his preference, the investor takes the power utility of the form u x equal to x raised to gamma uh, 0 less than gamma less than 1. As a result, the utilities from the two investment opportunities are given by the following. So, the utility u, u x is equal to x raised to gamma. So, then we look at both the opportunities and what is going to the utility. So, in the first case uh, for opportunity 1, I will denote the utility as u of 1 and this is going to be simply. Uh, so, here a 1 does not indicate the value, but this is going to indicate the opportunity 1. And this is going to be nothing but the wealth level uh, 10,000 raised to gamma. And in the second case, uh, u of 2, uh, that is the utility for opportunity 2, this is going to be given by the expected value. So, in this case, it is going to be the expected utility. And this will be given by, so we had the values 22,500 and the utility is this value raised to gamma multiplied by the probability of 0 0.3 plus we had uh, 4900. So, we had 4900 raised to gamma multiplied by the probability 0 0.3 plus we had 900 uh, the utility of which is raised to gamma multiplied by the probability 0 0.4. So, these are going to be the utilities for the first opportunity and the utility for the second opportunity. So, this brings me uh, to the question as to what is the value of gamma. So, unless I know the value of gamma uh, for the investor, I cannot make a comparison between u1 and u2 and hence cannot establish a preference criteria. And uh, the goal is, so accordingly the goal is uh, to determine the value of gamma. Now, uh, in order to determine this value of gamma, we need more uh, preferential 
uh, information from the investor. So, then uh, the investor says that that they are uh, indifferent. So, that means in this case the choice of gamma is driven by the indifference of the investor to a choice of either receiving an amount of 100 for sure or uh, receiving 144 and 64 with equal probabilities uh, that is half and half. So, when I have uh, said that the, in, uh, the investor is indifferent, so that means their utility or expected utilities are going to be identical. So, this manifests into the following. This so the utility for 100 is going to be 100 raised to gamma and the expected utility for the second choice is going to be 144 raised to gamma uh, and uh, into 0 0.5 plus 64 raised to gamma into 0 0.5 and this gives you that gamma is equal to half. Uh, so, hence based on this preference indicated by the investor, we get the utility function for the investor is given by e of x is equal to square root of x. All right. So, once you have got u of x equal to square root of x uh, that is uh, gamma is equal to half, you can put this back in gamma equal to half here and gamma is equal to half here. So, accordingly what we get is u of 1 is equal to 10,000 raised to gamma which is 10,000 raised to a half is equal to 100 and uh, u of 2 uh, remember that this was 2 to 5 0 0 raised to gamma into 0 0.3 plus 4 9 0 0 raised to gamma into 0 0.3 plus 900 raised to gamma into 0 0.4 uh, and this turns out to be so what does it uh, this raised to gamma so this is 0 0.3 into 2 to 5 0 0 raised to half plus 0 0.3 into 4900 raised to half plus 0 0.4 into 900 raised to half and this turns out to be equal to 78. Uh, so, since u1 which is equal to 100 is greater than u2 uh, which is 78, the investor decides to invest in opportunity 1. So, uh, just to do a recap of whatever we have done in today's class, in this class we started off with a new topic on optimal uh, portfolio and consumption and we mainly emphasized our discussion today on the notion of consumption and how uh, we can make a preference of uh, a consumption choice over another or how rather we can decide on how to make a preferential determination of which choice is uh, better for us. And then we connected this to the utility functions and uh, we, we looked at a couple of examples uh, involving uh, the consumption uh, choice uh, as well as how to determine the utility function. And more importantly, we looked at uh, a discrete time model in a market which comprises of a bond and capital L number of stock. 
and we looked at uh, two important aspects of this. One is what is known as the self-financing condition and then the other is the wealth process as a result of this uh, investment in a bond and in capital and number of stocks. So, in the next class we will continue with this discussion of the discrete time framework and we will start at looking at how to make an optimized portfolio uh, as a result of this process and first we will talk about the single period model and then we will move on to a multi period model in order to determine what is going to be my optimal uh, portfolio and uh, then uh, what is going to be my uh, optimal consumption and for that we will resort to an approach called uh, dynamic programming due to Richard Bellman. So, uh, thank you for watching.